if what you are doing does not bring you joy every single day, then what's the point? And, you know, I think the one thing that I decided that I was going to choose my wars, I wasn't going to try and fight every single battle. Okay. That we are all here for a purpose. We, we're not here just to breathe. The visionaries. The leaders. The titans. The game changers. The African Risers. Puti Mahanyela Dabengwa is an esteemed South African business executive who has currently taken on the role of the Chief Executive Officer of NESPA South Africa. She is the 100-year-old company's first female and first black chief executive. Puti is a seasoned leader with a strong track record of achievement throughout her career. Her work ethic has seen her achieve new heights of success. She has previously held the positions of co-founder and chief executive officer at Sigma Capital, as well as CEO at the Shanduka Group, of which the company's net asset value grew to over 8 billion rand during her 10-year tenure. Puti has won many accolades, including Business Woman of the Year by Forbes Africa, the top 50 women in the world to watch by the Wall Street Journal, and leading African women in business by Africa Investors. This is Putti's top 10 tips on how to be excellent. Number one, be bold. One of the things that, that I learned in, in my journey and in my continuing journey has been this importance of being bold. Whenever you're going to make a decision that's going to foster a change not only in your life, but largely in the lives of many other people, it's going to require you to be bold, to be willing to make that adaptation in a manner that will make a significant change. You need to be bold. And so I hope that if there's one thing that we have in this room is leaders who are bold. Because one thing that I've learned is that if you want to be able to sit in your comfortable position and to be able to do things in a comfortable and you know, a way that is easy to take in, then don't even think about leading anything. Because if you're going to be taking a leadership role, boldness will be a part of it. And so that's something that, that I've learned as, as a, a key part of, of Number two, surround yourself with the best. I like to believe that it, it is an empowering leadership style. I like to work with smart people. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not afraid to be amongst people who are more intelligent than me. I like it because they come up with the best ideas. Yeah. And you look <laughs> <I'm> good. <laughs> and I, I like to work with people who are passionate and really enjoy what they're doing and are not doing it because they're going to earn a bigger bonus right. or a better salary or whatever title. They're just doing it because they love what they're doing. Um, and you get such great ideas from them. So I love being amongst people who are smart, who are focused and who are empowered. And, and I think the, the area that helps me is that when someone is good at what they do, I don't try to go in and mm. try and help them to get to a decision. I, I give them the space to be the leader that they're supposed to be. Right. And I think often when you have a leader who's not trusting of their team, that's mm -hmm. where the difficulty becomes, mm -hmm. you know, because they want to play the role of the ex-co members who, you know, are quite capable yeah. to play their own yeah. roles. Yeah. Yeah. Number three, upskill yourself. So to, to young people out there, I would say focus as much as you can on skilling yourself. So if you're at school, make sure that you're able to get the best marks you can possibly get. And so that will mean that there will be things that you won't have time to do. There will be parties you can't go to. But that is what you are willing to give up for you to be able to grow on further. At the end of the day, when you look, you will see that, you know, you have masses of people that will do okay, but you have some that will do much more they will do much better than others. And the reason they're able to do much better than others is because of what they're willing to put in. So if you are going to be gauging yourself on just what your friends are doing and doing the average, 
you cannot expect to be able to do much more. So be willing to engage much more and, and to study harder. In the work environments for the young professionals, I would say rather than being focused on how people are treating you, um, if you're happy in the organization, learn as much as you possibly can. Understand the market that you're dealing with. Understand the products and all the things that are important in the business that you're in. And, you know, and, and over time, as you have that knowledge, you know, also get to know, you know, people in the organization. But remember that you're in a working environment, you know. So when there are social environments at work, this is not the time when there's a party or whatever. This is not the time for you to be like, you know, really like having the biggest party like you're with your best friends. <laughs> you remember, you are still in a professional organization. You know, you're not at home. Um, and, and, you know, and, and, and so it's important to make sure that you have the best work ethic, that you're applying yourself as much as possible, and that you are not as dependent on what others can do for you, but that you are focused on what you can do. And, and remember also to be willing to make time for those who have less than you. Number four, create opportunities for yourself. Future. And what I know about the future is that tomorrow will happen as a result of what you do today. So, you know, at the end of the day, you cannot blame anyone for not having had a certain opportunity because at the end of the day, it is about the decisions that you make for yourself. And, you know, things can become very difficult, but it is about the decisions that you make. And the thing that motivated me was in watching my father in the apartheid era South Africa, being able to find himself opportunities for education, doing his bachelor's degree, doing his master's degree, doing a doctorate in the 80s. And so I say to myself that if he, as a young black man, growing in Soweto, could be able to grow and make sure that he had these opportunities for education and to be able to run the large enterprise that he ran, what more can I do? What more can we do? Because we are here today and there is just so much more opportunity for us than there was back then in the 80s. We have more bursaries available in this country than any other country on the African continent. We have so many more opportunities here than can be easily available. The question is, are you willing to stand up and rise and take that opportunity? Or are you going to wait for that opportunity to be given to you? Because if you're going to wait for the opportunity to come to you, you will wait for a long time. But if you're willing to rise and go and claim that opportunity and work hard for it, then you will find yourself being able to create a different future for yourself. And what I say when I speak also to young people, especially young people that I go and I mentor and all of that, it's, it's about the fact that being the first person to graduate from university or from Technicon is a wonderful thing. It's not a bad thing. Just because no one else in your family has ever studied beyond matric does not mean that you also end at matric. You can take it further. And so we need to be able to take ownership of who we are. I believe, and this is my own belief, that every single person has been born with, that pur with a purpose. The difference is the decision that you make, whether you're going to fulfill that purpose or not. And it is entirely your decision. It is easy to just live a life where you are just doing just things that are expected of you and just living the normal and, you know, but are you doing what you know you need to do? Are you giving all you possibly could give? It is entirely up to you because I know for a fact that each and every one of us has got a gifting to give in this country and in fact in this world. And it is all dependent on how much you are deciding to push yourself. Number five, make it possible. Having seen what I have seen and having learned all that I have learned, that we are all here for a purpose. We, we're not here just to breathe. 
We were all here for a specific purpose. But do you know what differentiates us? What differentiates us is that ability to make it real. Because to make it real takes guts. If you heard what Isaac said, it's, it's about having that ability, that gut, to do that which seems impossible. And so I learned, I had the privilege of learning this from my own father. He was uneducated, but he decided he was going to get an education. And this was in the apartheid era. You know, and this is why I often say to young people that if you say that there are no opportunities today, what about the people that made opportunities possible yeah. in the apartheid era? Yeah. How do you say they made it possible? You know, one of the people that I'm going to talk about here is an entrepreneur by the name of, uh, let me not speak about him. But these are people who in those years made things possible which appeared impossible. And so why can we not take the opportunities and make them a possibility today? And that is what it's about. It's about making things that appear impossible and making them into a possibility. Number six, do the detailed work. Well, the, the one experience that I learned is just the tenacity, the hard work ethic, the importance of that. Um, I, I just, I learned about the importance of understanding and, and really going through the detail. You know, unfortunately, I think many of us, when we look at people who've succeeded, we will look at them and we forget that people have walked a road to get there. So what you're seeing now is the finished product. But to get there, it needs you to be willing to take the detail, to do all that work that nobody else Number seven, aim to make a difference. In whatever it is that you do, whether it is you as a citizen, whether it is you in your business, in whatever role that you are playing, that you remember that you continue to drive the values that are meaningful to you. That is what will change our country as we move forward. That is what will move us forward and, and drive us to be an economy that we need to be, for us to be a, an economy that is highly respectful, that is highly respected out there, you know, amongst other economies in the world. And we are a respected economy, but for us to continue being highly regarded, for us to be even more highly regarded. There is more that we need to do, and only we can change it. It, it. it takes initiatives from all of us as corporates, all of us as business people, to be able to drive change in our communities. Our, our businesses that we build cannot just be about our profit. It's also about the profit that we can see from the changes that we can engineer in our communities. It, it's got to be about that. Because why, why then even have a business if you can't make a significant change in some area in our community? And so it, it's something that has made it very meaningful for me to be a part of the Shanduka team, to be with people who understand and are very committed to making a difference in society, not only in being able to pay a good dividend to our shareholders, but being able to pay a good dividend to our future. And that is the young people in this country. Number eight, choose your wars. And, you know, I think the one thing that I decided that I was going to choose my wars, I wasn't going to try and fight every single battle. Okay. Um, because otherwise I was going to be battle weary. Mm. <laughs> you know, I'd be coming from mm. one battle to the other. Mm. Um, so I decided that I was going to choose the battles. Um, so I never would take on fights from people that I didn't think had an influence or impact on me. And I also always made a decision on how I would approach um, an issue yeah. because you don't always have to battle out an issue. Sometimes it's a conversation and you know, you can really tell a person off in a very nice, calm way, you know, and, and, and deliver the message. And, and, and that way they receive you better because mm -hmm. you're not coming out and, and trying to, you know, um, to show just that you can really put them in their place and all of that. You're having a conversation with them and, and they get that. So I think, you know, just learning some of these tactics um, and, and not being out there as the warrior woman. 
um, you've got to be smart. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got to be street smart. Number nine, respect people. So I would say looking back that the key qualities that got me to where I am um, are firstly, I think I would have to start with the spiritual element, um, just understanding that it is not just about what you see, but the possibility of what you can create in spite of what is around you. Um, and secondly, I would say it really is the work ethic. Um, and, and then also I would say the importance of understanding that everybody has got a role in life. And so you respect people in spite of where they might be or what they do. Number 10, do the things that bring you joy. If what you are doing does not bring you joy every single day, then what's the point? And isn't it so sad that so many people are sitting in jobs that don't give them joy? And yet our jobs take up so much time in our lives, or at least I'd like to think they do. <laughs> and so therefore it is important that if you're going to be in a role, that it is something that is really meaningful for you so that you can really make a significant impact in that particular role that you play. And you know, it is not just about the job that you're actually getting paid a salary for. It is more than that. It is about how you extend yourself as a leader in that organization. And you don't have to wait until you are given the title of a leader to be a leader. It, it is just about how you carry yourself and the level of accountability that you show to give people confidence in you as a leader. And so it's important that, that we look at these aspects um, and, and look at how our actions are speaking to our quality of leadership. And there you have it, Putty's top 10 tips on how to be excellent. Really hope you enjoyed this video and give it a massive thumbs up. Remember to follow us on our Instagram page and continue to spread the spirit of excellence. See you next time on African Rises.